Hey there, amazing learners. Welcome back to our super cool math journey. Today, we're diving into a math topic that's all about triangles and angles. It's called trigonometry. But don't let that big word scare you. We're going to make it as easy as pie, I promise. So, what is trigonometry? Well, as I mentioned, it involves calculating angles and sides in triangles. Now, let's take a look at a triangle that I have here for you. So, there's three sides of a right angle triangle, and they have special names. Starting off with H for the high hypotenuse. And that is seen as the longest side. And it is opposite the right angle. And then we have our opposite and we have our adjacent. So again, opposite is opposite the angle and adjacent is next to the angle. And now these are seen as three trigonometric ratios. And that is your sine, your cosine and your tangent. So how are these calculated? Well, they're calculated by calculating the ratio of two sides of a right angled triangle. And you may have heard of the term of SO, CA, and TOA. And that's a useful way to remember this. So let's go ahead and see how we can apply this. And we're going to use the same structure as how I've written it out here. So question number one. ABC is a right angle triangle. And we need to work out the length of B to C. So that is this length here. Now, step one, what we're going to do is we're going to label the sides. Starting off with the longer side, which is our hypotenuse. We then have the side that is opposite to the angle, and that's your opposite. And then we have our adjacent. So that's step one. Step two, we then need to choose whether it's going to be our SO, our CA, or our TOA. And how are we going to find that out? Well. We know that we need to work out B to C, and we know we have A, which is our adjacent. So we can highlight two of these sides, and that ends up with an O and an A, which means we are using tan. And how does this work? Well, we have tan followed by the angle, which is 36 degrees. And then we equal this to O divided by A. Hence, I've written it out in that specific way. And so that's going to be X over 8.7. And all we now need to do is make x the subject. And so this divided by 8.7 can go to the left hand side and become 8.7 multiplied by tan 36, which gives us x. And now once we've gone ahead and done that, we then find out that our answer is 6.32. So now we know the length of BC is 6.32. So let's recap this once more. Step one, we label our sides. Step two, we select whether it's so, ka, or toa. And then step three, we make x the subject. I hope that was clear. Let's now go ahead and dive into question two. So now we need to calculate the value of x once again. So let's label our sides. We've got our hypotenuse, we've got our opposite, and we have our adjacent. One thing to note here is we need the value of x and we have the hypotenuse already, so that's h and o. So remember, that was your so. So we're going to write it out in this specific form, which is going to be sine 60 equals o divided by h, as you can see, and that's going to be x over 32. We then take 32 over, so we have sine 60 multiplied by 32, which gives us x. And if you were to put this into your calculator, you would see x as the value of 27.7 centimeters. And that's completed. Now, don't forget to pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, just like question three, and then press play to see if you got the same answer as me. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. So question three, calculate the length of QR, and that's this bottom length here. So step one, let's go ahead and highlight our sides. We've got the hypotenuse, 
we've got the opposite, which is opposite the angle, and we have our adjacent. So we can label the adjacent as X. So this time we've got A and H, which again is going to be so, ka, or toa. Well, we'll go with ka, because that's A and H. So instantly, we'll have cos 43 equals X over 5.8. We can then bring 5.8 over, and that will be cos 43 multiplied by 5.8, which will equal x. So if you put that in the calculator, and don't forget to put the brackets around the angle, that would then give us 4.24, and that there is our answer. So you should now be quite confident with working out the lengths of the sides, but what happens when we're given the task to calculate an angle. And that's what question four is doing right away. So let's take the same steps as we did before, which is to label our sides. We've got our hypotenuse, we've got our opposite, and we've got our adjacent. And you can see that they've given us two sides here, but we need to figure out the angle X. Now, as we have O and A, we're gonna to use TOA, which was tan, wasn't it? So we'll have our tan x, remember we don't know what x is at the moment, 5 over 12.5. But how do we work that out? Well, what we're going to do, and this is what you're going to enter in your scientific calculator, and that's going to be the inverse of tan. So you can click the button. So you can press the button shift and tan, and you'll get tan to the power of minus one, equals five over 12.5. And by doing that, you'd get the value of 21.8 degrees. And that there is your answer. So the only difference between calculating an angle and calculating the side is using the inverse button. And that's shift followed by so, ka, or toa, which is your sine, cos, or tan. Marvellous work. Let's go over to question five now. Very much similar as question four. We'll go ahead and label our sides. We've got our hypotenuse opposite and our adjacent. We have these two values here. So that's going to be our ka. We'll then go ahead and have cos x, which equals 6.4 over 9.6. And when you put that into your calculator as cos minus one, you'll get the value of x being 48.2, and we are good to go. I hope that is clear. Let's move over to question six. Work out the value of x. So one more time. We're going to label our sides. We've got our hypotenuse. We've got our adjacent and opposite. Again, we know a and h gives us a ka, which is cosine. So we'll have cos x equals 3.9 over 4.7. We'll then, in order to make x the subject, we'll have to do cos to the power of minus 1. And that will give us 33.9 degrees. And that's done through your scientific calculator. I hope that is clear. Let's move into question 7. So again, we need to work out the value of x here. So now let's go and label our sides. We've got our hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. But this time we have O and A. As you know, that is TOA. So we will have tan x equals 4.5 over 12. In order to make x the subject, we'll have tan to the power of minus 1, 4.5 over 12. And that there would give us the value of x, which is 20.6 degrees. Now, as I said, pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready to go. You've done really well coming this far. Let's keep it up, team. Okay, moving over to question eight. Calculate the size of the angle A in this right angle triangle. So very much the same thing. We'll have our hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Remember, opposite is always opposite the angle. And the adjacent is always next to the right angle. So once again, we'll have tan A, which equals 5 over 6. But in order to get A, we're going to have tan inverse 
5 over 6, and that gives us 39.8 degrees. And that there is correct. Okay, let's move over to question 9. Once again, we're finding out the value of x. So we'll have our hypotenuse adjacent and opposite. We know once again it's a and o, so it's our TOA. So again, we'll have tan x equals 8 over 12. And we can have tan to the power of mi minus 1, which is 8 over 12. And that gives us 33.7 degrees as our x value. Beautiful. But this time around, part B states that we need to calculate the length of yz. So how do we do that? Well, I presume we have to label our sides once again, as we've done right away. I can see we have our opposite and our hypotenuse, as we need to find the length of yz. So that's going to be sin. So we'll have sin 32 equals 5 over x. We then make x the subject. So we have to swap these two around, which means we will have 5 over sin 32. And that there gives us 9.44. And that there is your answer. OK, over to the final set of questions. The diagram shows a quadrilateral ABCD. So calculate the length of CD. So what's the first thing we need to do? Well, this is quite interesting because we're now bringing in Pythagoras. And if you haven't already seen our Pythagoras video, click the link below and that will take you there directly. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the length of BD. And what we're going to do here is we're simply going to have BD equals the root of 16 squared minus 12 squared. And that there would give you 4 root 7. And the reason I've written 4 root 7 is because this is not our final answer. So we are not going to round the number at any point in time until it's the very last point of the question. We're then going to go ahead and put 4 root 7 here. And now we can label our triangle. So we have our adjacent, our hypotenuse and our opposite. Remember, we're working out C to D, so I'll label that as X. And I now know that we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that falls into so. I then go ahead and write out sine 40 equals 4 root 7 over x. Remember, we need to make x the subject. So I'll just swap this over and we'll have x equals 4 root 7 over sine 40. And that there would give us the value of x being 16.5 centimeters. So step one, we use Pythagoras to calculate one side of our triangle, which is B to D. And then we use our trigonometry to calculate the value of side CD. Okay, and that brings us to our final question. ABC is a triangle and ADC is a straight line. So we need to calculate the length of A to C. So that's this entire line here. So considering a question like this, we know that we will have to work with Pythagoras theorem at one stage. But the first task will be to calculate B to D. And so once we calculate length B to D, we can then use Pythagoras to calculate D to C and then also to calculating A to D. So let's go ahead and calculate that right away. So we start off by understanding that we have SO as we need to calculate B to D. So that's going to be sine 65 equals x over 7. We can then make x the subject and have x equals 7 times sine 65. And so now we know that x equals 6.344 and so on. So I've labeled my x as 6.344. I'll just write the entire value down of this as it is on the calculator. So now I have done that. I can use Pythagoras to calculate a to d. And so what I will do is simply have 7 squared minus 6.344 and so on. And this will give me the answer to a d. And so once I put that into my calculator, 
we'll root it and we'll know that our AD is now 2.95832. So I'll label that as 2.95832. Remember, don't round it up at this stage. Work with the entire value. So now we've gone ahead and done that. We can now focus on our triangle DBC. And so with this, what I will do is take 12 squared and I will subtract 6.344 and so on. And this will then give me the value of D to C. And don't forget to root your answer as well. So CD will equal the root of 12 squared minus 6.344. And that there will give us 10.1858. Okay. And now I've gone ahead and done that. All I now need to do is add this value to my AD. And once I put that in the calculator, that gives me 13. And again, if we round that to three significant figures, we would get 13.1. And that there is our answer. That is six marks in the bag. And there you have it. Wow, we did it. We just conquered some super fun trigonometry together. You are all math superstars. If you have any questions or want to learn more about math or any other topic, remember to hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and ring that notification bell so you never miss our awesome lessons. Keep being amazing and we'll see you in the next video.